That Thor Ragnarok trailer was hella good, wasn't it? Happy Thor's Day. Today, on Issue at Hand, I explain what the hella is going on in Thor Ragnarok. And now I'm done with puns. This is Issue at Hand, Polygon's show about the strange world of comics, and I'm your host, Susanna Polo. Today, I'm finally going to break down everything that's happening in the Thor Ragnarok trailer, so let's get the show on the road. Starting with our new characters and our new villain. Meet Hela, played by Kate Blanchett, ruler of Hell and Niflheim, the goddess of death. Appointed by Odin to rule over the dishonorable dead, Hela has often battled against Asgard for control over the honorable dead in the feast hall of Valhalla. And in Thor Ragnarok, it looks an awful lot like she succeeds, banishing Thor and possibly other Asgardians from Asgard. It might be time for some old gods to get new jobs, like Valkyrie, played by Tessa Thompson. She's the leader of an elite strike force of winged horse-riding warrior women, tasked by Odin with ferrying the souls of fallen warriors to Valhalla. But her first appearance in comics was never intended to be that of a fully-fledged superhero. Initially, Valkyrie was just a disguise worn by the villain, the Enchantress. As the Valkyrie, Enchantress was essentially written as an evil feminist. In an Avengers story published in 1970, she enchanted several Marvel superheroines with such radical ideals as women should have the respect of their male colleagues, and we shouldn't define women by their relationships to men, and gender discrimination in hiring should be abolished. She tried to get them to destroy the Avengers, but was eventually exposed as an evil schemer. Three years later, in 1973, Valkyrie would become her own entity and a core member of the original Defenders. Retcons gave her an origin story, explaining that she was an actual Asgardian psychopomp whose essence the Enchantress had trapped in order to use her powers. Now, Hela and Valkyrie shouldn't be confused with Hel, the Norse goddess of the underworld, or Brunhilde the Valkyrie, the actual Norse mythological figures that they're based on. In fact, there's a lot in Marvel's Thor stories that shouldn't be confused with actual Norse myth, which is often a lot wilder than anything in the comics. Not that I wouldn't totally read a comic about the time that everybody put Thor in a dress in order to trick a frost giant into marrying him. Thor was co-created by Jack Kirby, one of the major architects of Marvel's cosmic characters, who I touched on in last episode. And Kirby's Thor comics show his fascination with gods, monsters, and strange new worlds. And Thor Ragnarok looks like it's leaning on the Kirby side of the Marvel Universe in a big way. Which brings me to our third new character, Jeff Goldblum. I, I mean, the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster is one of those characters who is so strange and plays such a minor role in the Marvel Universe that a film adaptation could go just about anywhere with him. But here's what he's basically about. The Grandmaster is an ancient being who has mastered all the games of skill and chance of every race in the multiverse. And if he reminds you of Benicio Del Toro's character from Guardians of the Galaxy, you're not wrong. The Collector and the Grandmaster are both elders of the universe, one of the oldest races. In Thor Ragnarok, it seems like he's overseeing some kind of gladiatorial arena that our heroes are swept up in. The image of the Hulk in full gladiatorial armor in an intergalactic arena can seem strange, but that's exactly what happened in Planet Hulk, a 2006 story arc in The Incredible Hulk, written by Greg Pak. After years of cleaning up after his disasters, a group of the Marvel Universe's biggest geniuses and most politically powerful superheroes decided that Bruce Banner posed too great a threat to life on Earth to allow him to remain on the planet. So they put him in a rocket and they shot him into space. The ship was supposed to strand Banner on a peaceful, uninhabited planet outside of the solar system, but instead it went into a wormhole and crashed on the planet Sakaar. There, Hulk was enslaved to the gladiatorial arenas of the Red King and went totally Russell Crowe, becoming a folk hero, having a series of rad rebel gladiator adventures, overthrowing the Red King and taking his throne. Then Hulk and his queen Kyra had a baby and everybody lived happily ever after. Actually, they super, super didn't, but we're here to talk about Planet Hulk, not World War Hulk. Let's see, uh, what else? There's this guy, Scourge the Executioner, who's in uh, one second of the trailer. He's an Asgardian with a history of being manipulated into serving the will of various smarter Asgardian villains. It's unclear exactly what his role is here other than to be played by Carl Urban. And then there's Thor losing his hammer. That isn't actually that unusual for the big guy. Even in comics, he's recently spent several years without the hammer after finding himself unworthy to wield it. 
Mjolnir chose a new person to carry out the power of Thor, while the old guy took the name Odinson and started palling around with an axe named Jarnbjorn. And then there's where Thor Ragnarok sits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's continuity. The last time we saw Thor was in Age of Ultron, when he went skinny dipping on a vision quest to find out about the Infinity Stones. But the last time we saw Asgard was at the end of Thor The Dark World, where a post credit scene revealed that Loki had somehow done away with Odin and secretly taken the throne of Asgard for himself. We also learned from a different post credit scene in Doctor Strange that Loki's scheme has been uncovered, and Thor has brought him to New York to seek their lost father. Benedict Cumberbatch's Sorcerer Supreme has been confirmed to appear in Thor Ragnarok as well. As you may have noticed, Thor Ragnarok looks like it's pulling from a lot of different aspects of the Marvel Universe, and it also looks like it's making a big departure from the tone of previous Thor movies. It looks like it's barely going to take place on Earth, will involve a lot of cosmic Marvel craziness and a lot of bright colors. The director of the film, Taika Waititi, is primarily known for movies with a comedic side, compared to Kenneth Branagh and Alan Taylor on the previous Thor movies, who are far more on the side of talky dramas. Waititi will also be the first person of color to direct a movie in the MCU. And that's a hella of a good thing. Okay, I, I lied about the pun thing. Next time, on Issue at Hand... Wonder Woman. been uncovered, and Thor has brought him to New York to seek their lost father. Now, Kirby's Thor comics show the writer and artist's fascination. Thor was co-created by Jack Kirby, one of the major architects of Marvel's comics cosmic characters. I didn't screw that up once in the cosmic episode, but I got it wrong in this one.